My presentation today looks at resources in our reside collection. Newry Moore Museum is located in Bagnalls Castle and is a small local authority run by Newry Moore and Down District Council. And like many other local authority museums, it has various archival collections that can be mined for research and exhibition purposes. And the reside collection is an example of a research resource that can be used for the 1920s period. And this image uh, shows Major Reside in his uniform. He was uh, involved in the evacuation of Dunkirk and he was also at the D-Day landings as well. And we have his uniform currently on display in the museum in our Second World War exhibition. The second photograph you can see there is his wedding photograph with his wife, Margaret uh, Reside Nee Fisher, and they married in 1947. Uh, the Reside collection forms the nucleus of the local history archive in Mary and Moore Museum, and it's a product of professional lives of Samuel Wilson Reside, who was Major Reside's father. And they were architects and engineers. And Mark Reside, who was a solicitor, one of the early female solicitors in, in Ireland. She graduated in 1927. There's 12,000 artifacts in the collection, made mainly archival and dating from 1708 to 1990s in the collection. It's, the collection is very wide ranging and sheds a lot of light on the local history of the Newry area. For example, it has the state records, encumbered estate records, architectural plans and survey maps, land purchase commission papers, legal papers, newspapers, and many other miscellaneous items as well. It also contains a small amount of material relevant to the 1920s period. And the collection was donated in, in the main in 2003, and there was a small uh, amount given in uh, 2001, and then a further donation in 2019. Now the collection that was donated in 2001, 2003 has been a fully catalogued, and at the moment we're listing the new material. Uh, material in the uh, archive relevant to the study of this period include 1922 Ogden Iron Communications and that's a uh, Fourth Northern Division and there's also 43 Boundary Commission uh, uh, submissions. Now these are drafts with annotations that were worked upon by a local solicitor William Johnson in preparation to submit them to the Boundary Com Commission in the main from businesses who wanted to remain in Northern Ireland and didn't want to uh, go into the Irish Free State. There's also a range of land commission documents related to the Northern Ireland Land Act 1925 as well. Just show you some of the material here. Uh, this is dated 20th of January 1922 and relates to the 1st Brigade fourth and the four battalions that are covering Dundalk, Drummond Team, Mullabon and Ballymoyer. Also the 2nd Brigade, three battalions covering Atticall, Newry, Sheeptown and Knock and a number of other uh, there are, sorry, Paris is coming in. Apologies, power was going on my machine there. Uh, second uh, set of uh, information relating to that part of the collection is uh, battalion instructions, and that they were issued during the Irish War of Independence, and um, they're dated February 1922. There are two officer commanding the 1st Battalion in Kilkeen and it gives instructions, for example, take all precautions immediately in receipt of this. And then that you must then second document also to the officer commanding statement that you may instruct all men your command to be on guard and resist arrest. Okay, so there's also material relating to uh, Republican courts in the area as well. So the areas of Newry, Corrig, Glen, Hilltown, Barn, Main. There are a number of townlands in the Newry area and also Warren County Strever. That document also gives numbers of sittings a month and comments on how the courts were working, the justice's name and the clerk's name. And it also provides details on district courts for Newry and Warren Point. These documents are quite uh, hard to see, so that's why I've uh, taken out some of the information. The justice for Warren Point was John Quinn, and in brackets under his name it says dead. 
and uh, John Quinn or Sean Quinn, as he was known, died of his wounds uh, uh, in 1923 after Free State troops tr- attacked leaders of the anti treaty forces in Castle Bellingham in County Loud. His brother, Todrick Quinn, was also uh, uh, wounded in that attack as well, and he and, but he and Frank Aiken uh, escaped. Uh, this is the Irish Republican Police uh, in the Newry area for Corrig, Glen, Hilltown. And it gives uh, the county, the officer's name, the number of police appointed and how working. And again, there's quite interesting information in this as well. But one of the officers, Tom Clare, who was the officer for Warren Point, he was subsequently shot uh, by Sergeant Tutty in 1925 on the steps of Newry Cathedral. So quite interesting material in that collection. So we also have, a, as I said before, a number of Boundary Commission a draft and annotation documents that were prepared by local solicitors. And a, they a, relate directly to businesses in the area such as John Kelly Limited, Warren Point, the Best Brook and Newry Tramway Company, Camlock Waterworks. And there's also some material from Warren Point Urban Council. But the, a, the council a, wanted to... A, go into the Irish Free State where the businesses wanted to remain in Northern Ireland. Also, uh, in addition to this, there's also a lot of important information in the collection as well that has been uh, put together by uh, whoever was arranging for the submission of the documents, which was probably uh, William Johnson. And that gives a uh, the summer excursions in 1924 to Warren Point, and again that shows that most of the people who were going to Warren Point were from railway stations in the rest of Northern Ireland. So these documents are highly valuable in terms of looking at the opinions of local individuals and groups in the South Down and South Armagh area at that period. And we would also we we intend to research these uh, draft submissions against those ones in the National Archives Office, which were, in fact, submitted. You can see some of the ends here and here relating, this is the representation by the Bestbrook and Newry Tramway Company to the Boundary Commission, and then that's the evidence of the Warren Point Harbour Authority. And as you can see, uh, Johnson and Rutherford solicitors are the people who prepared this evidence as well. There's also the property owners in Warren Point wished to uh, remain in Northern Ireland and did not want to be uh, transferred into the Irish Free State. And they stated that, uh, that because of economic reasons, that they wanted to remain in uh, Northern Ireland. And this is some example of some of the supporting evidence, and this shows the volume of the passengers carried by the Great Northern Railway Ireland on the 27th of September, uh, 27th of April to September 1924, and there was 37,000 people carried by, on the railway. And the, the schedule of excursions gives the date the name of the party, the stations that they came from, and most of those stations were places like Bambridge, Portadown, Killy Lay, Market Hill, uh, places like that, and the number of passengers that were carried as well. So that was all evidence to say that most of the people who were visiting Warren Point were from Northern Ireland, and again, supporting evidence used for the Boundary Commission. There's also more supporting evidence in, in this document here, which shows the comparative taxation in Northern Ireland and the Free State in the period 1924 to 25, and that's their, their budget proposals. So they're demonstrating that in Northern Ireland uh, income tax, uh, even commodities were cheaper than they were in the Free State as well. And we also have a range of land purchase commission papers. Uh, that will be of use to people researching that period as well. These dates around the 1925 area, 1925 uh, time. And these are annotated by Samuel Wilson Reside and, and Major Gerald Reside, who were surveyors and architects. And these are quite interesting documents as well for studying that period. And it's quite interesting. Uh, this is a major reside, a uh, official opening of Murray Museum in 1986. He's a tall man standing beside the door, and uh, he was he officially opened the museum in 1986. And uh, 
this is also a page on the left hand side from his uh, he was a member of the Old Neary Society and uh, this a uh, little bit of note, uh, note paper from that 1971 shows the members of the Old Neary Society and Dr. Padraig Quinn was chairman of the Old Neary Society and he was in fact a uh, he had been in the fought in the uh, Irish he was fought as a an Irish Republican Army quartermaster in the Irish War of Independence, but he'd also been a medical medical practitioner in Newry as well, and made reside was the vice chair of that committee. So, and then Mrs. Mrs. Donnelly Woods' name is on this, and it's quite interesting. I talked about the the, the Eamon Donnelly collection that we have in the museum as well yesterday, and uh, she was the daughter of Eamon Donnelly, and again she was involved involved in the Old Newry Society too. So as I said before, the reside collection has been catalogued and at the moment we're uh, listing the material that was donated in 2019. But the, the collection is searchable on our website. Our, our website is quite an old website, but the reside collection can be uh, uh, searched on that. And there's also other documents relating to an exhibition we have on the reside collection, which is uh, on display at the moment. And hopefully when we reopen again, uh, people can look at that. There's also a booklet that goes along with that uh, exhibition as well.